well, hello again. And um, I am here again on behalf of Isabelle de Froidmont, the project officer of Manugot. Um, she followed the project for the, its entirety and I'm sure she would have loved to be here and uh, do this closing herself. So I will try and do my best not to let her down if she sees the video. Um, and so basically I'm going to tell you about what we think of when we think about the future, which is very uncertain. Uh, so my job here was a bit facilitated by Biden's presentation in the morning. So uh, he went through our view of looking at something in a systemic view and not thinking that by only targeting a point of the food chain, we're going to have a major impact. We need to look at the entire system. We need to look at different ecosystems, different environments, not just <coughs> land, but also the oceans, not just uh, animals, humans, food products, uh, soil. Everything comes together and everything has an impact on the next step. And so what we try to do is to promote this view. And this is also a message that if it stays with you, then like a previous speaker said, I have my job done as well. Um, so if we say, well, we are used to seeing the microbiome being associated to the human gut. Well, it's true, but it's also easy to understand how important it can be in other steps of the food chain, the food production, if we can restore um, the health of soils and their fertility, if we can protect plants from disease or pests via the microbiomes, then maybe we can uh, improve our food production and contribute to food security. What about processing? Processing, I suppose, now that population is increasing and uh, demand is expected to also increase, uh, will probably be a major thing. So even in the commission, we are promoting novel foods, novel, novel ideas, which is a good thing. And we hope to have um, for those new products to have a positive impact on the microbiome. But we can also not forget that sometimes what we do when we change things can have uh, unintended effects. Uh, so for example, the, there's the Trello's um, example that's coming up now, and that's a very interesting, for instance, something, so we change our food. 20 years ago, we started adding ubiquitously uh, a sugar to improve texture and so on. And 20 years later, we're finding a correlation, okay, not a causation, but still a correlation, um, that gives uh, Clostridium difficilis a competitive advantage, something that we used to be able to fight on our own. Uh, again, it's a correlation, so, but, just to say that we need to be careful about the changes that we make and we need to follow these things um, long term. Uh, well, healthy people, I guess that's the most obvious for most of you here. Uh, basically, the hope is that if we can modulate our microbiomes via what we eat, via our, our diets, we can improve uh, our health. Uh, and then also waste uh, streams, it's, um, it's also a, a part of it because uh, more and more studies are including searches of community of microbiomes that can actually digest bio waste, which includes food waste, uh, to turn them into added value products. So this would also contribute to reducing food waste, which is also uh, one of the sustainable development goals. Uh, so to half the per capita food waste by 2030. Uh, now, the microbiome is, I mean, everywhere and so broad and it's so complicated and it's, it's just too much and we cannot really hope to do anything about it on our own. We need collaborations, not even just within the EU, but also with our international partners. And this has been actually called for um, by, by two, two publications. And we responded to that. Um, but and also talk to you this morning about the International Bioeconomy Forum. So this is still a, kind of a, a baby uh, initiative. It's, uh, it's, it's just starting to take the, its, its first steps. It has uh, two running uh, working groups, one on a microbiome and another one on uh, ICT. 
two more will hopefully be uh, established uh, this year in Canada. Uh, that's on plant health and uh, also on forestry. And why am I bringing this up again? This is because also in November we will have a coordination and support action that's meant to support both microbiome RNI and the IBF. And so this is also an invitation. So I am not really allowed to disclose any identifying information about the projects, which is a shame. Uh, but in any case, it is expected to uh, start at the beginning of November. So as soon as the information is public, I would hope that every one of you would try and see how they can get involved because uh, among other things, the CSA is very much expected to contribute to bring coherence in uh, issues like standards, protocols, methodologies. Uh, this includes the human gut microbiome, of course, but it expands, it goes way beyond, it goes into every ecosystem. So, meaning that any researcher that's doing anything with microbiology can contribute in a way or another. Um, and also international networks. I mean, they will, this is another big expectation that people will know be able to come together, share knowledge, uh, share data, and uh, even create a, maybe a platform, who knows, that makes it easier for everyone to just achieve progress um, faster. Um, then, um, we also will be launching four innovation actions. Uh, they will start between November and January. Um, they are also expected to develop uh, commercial applications uh, to respond to food systems microbiome and this they will be very different the four of them uh, and so we will cover marine we will cover land aquaculture agriculture big data and um, i also hope that um, you will hear more about them once they are public um, so for 2019 uh, we have, so this is the difference, so for the four innovation actions are from a topic that was calling for food systems microbiome applications, so it was very easy if you were looking for uh, topics that were related to the microbiome, you would easily see, okay, this one is very interesting for me, but what another message that I would like to pass on is that these big projects sometimes don't have microbiome on the title, or it's not really directly visible how it can be related but people find a way. So also in 2018, we will have another two innovation actions on a bio-waste uh, topic. And both of the innovation actions also include a work packages dealing with the microbiome, trying to find the best communities to tackle the issue. And another one with four uh, projects is personalized nutrition. So it's also there. This, hap this will happen in 2019. I mean, it's up to you to decide whether this interests you in any way, but here is the information. We will have uh, one for innovation actions on alternative proteins for food and feed. This includes microbiome um, applications, of course. Uh, then there's one on innovative and citizen-driven food systems in cities. And this is very open. If you look at the text, you can Basically, if you, if you have enough imagination, you can find, <laughs> can find a way. And, uh, and the other one is also, for instance, here we hear a lot about the human, and of course, it's, it's a major source because we are human. Uh, but the point is that antimicrobials and animal production, for instance, this might not be immediate, but if you then look into the text, it specifies that it will look into modulation of host immunity and or microbial flora. So what you find that works for the human gut may be very valuable for other systems and it would be great if we would break all these um, cells and differences and thinking that I'm only working on humans so I, I, I don't even expect how this could be useful for anything else. It can, it can, it can very much and sometimes people are doing the same thing using the resources twice to do the exact same thing in a human and in a cow and maybe, you know, this could be prevented. So, beyond Horizon 2020, uh, we will have Horizon Europe. 
uh, but and also touch upon this. Uh, we are not quite sure what's going to happen. We are not. We don't know at this point how the microbiome will be represented in Horizon Europe. We don't know if it's going to be at the level of a mission or if it's going to be something that's completely cross-cutting and it's just going to be present in mm, most missions. Uh, but we also are looking out at you to tell us what's the right direction. Uh, I mean, it's very, very complex. There are so many different uh, species and combinations of species. And we have now the technology to map, to sequence, and we can know uh, what's the composition of um, the microbiome of a specific individual and so on. Should we continue to do that? Should we do that for soils, for plants? Is that the way first to, to do the base first? But what about then all the interactions and all the functionalities? So we are, you look at us for funding and we look at you for suggestions and directions as well. So this is also an invitation to take part of the conversation. So as I, well, it's very clear that this is not a crazy idea uh, of the commission, that uh, the microbiome is very important in every aspect. It's, it's for, of course, plant production, but also energy, climate, health. Um, it's, it's just everywhere. And this is why we can expect to hear more and more about this. So we should also be careful about you know, what's too trendy. Uh, so we should tread carefully. So basically, my point is that we don't know. We don't know what's going to be the future. We look at you and we hope that, um, that you will respond to the call and actually give, give us nice ideas. And my final call, and then I'll let you go, is uh, I actually met Yolanda for the first time this June at uh, the 7th International Human Microbiome Consortium meeting. Uh, and it was a great meeting. And the lounge, uh, there was the lounge of the World Microbiome Day. So then there was this invitation to make this an annual event, to not let it die. And there was an, so basically inviting people to do something in 2019 uh, and 2020. So here's an open invitation. Then you look at me and you're asking, are you doing something for the World Microbiome Day? I hope so. We will let you know. Uh, but irrespective, if you have a meeting that can be squished around that time and you can make a reference just to not let it die. This would be also very good. Upcoming events, if, uh, well, that which are very relevant, I will stress the Bioeconomy Conference because there's the revision of strategies that's been just adopted by the European Commission. Uh, the Canada event, oh, no, first we have also um, a Warsaw uh, Conference on the Microbiome. Uh, we will be represented there as well. And our IBF uh, Canada event, which I hope you will hear from and will participate in, in future activities. And this is it from me. If you have any questions, I will be happy to take them. <laughs> Very good. Well, I can imagine you have uh, got uh, a bit of ideas or a flavor of what we are aiming at. Yeah. These are all these number of conference and talks. Uh, yes, we have lots of ideas, but this is how we do it. We have a balance between what we get from uh, the research community, the directions we have at a political level, what we hear also from uh, society. So we all we bring it all together. And so I will keep you posted, but I also hope to hear from you. This is my message. Yeah. Something else? If not, thank you. Thank you very much. Craig. Very good.